Hi there guys and welcome back to the Knox YouTube channel. In this video we've got Adam Child with us and we're going to be talking about not one but two new Multistradas for 2024. So Chad, this is a Multistrada fest, this yeah. video, isn't it? And look, the standard V4 Multistrada, really special bike, just as it is. It's class, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. You've ridden the V4 and the V4S, haven't you? Yeah, no, well, actually just the V4S, but I've ridden now like the Street Fighter V4S. Yeah. And I've ridden the, um, which obviously it's not a Multistrada, but um, the Multistrada V4S as well. All of them blow your socks off. They're class bikes, aren't they? But obviously they're looking to expand that range. So basically when, when you thought that's kind of, what more can you do with the Multistrada? They bring out two. Yeah. So the first one is a very special RS. Now, what makes it special is it's got, first of all, it's got a 17 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear, which is what the Pikes Peak bike has got. So it's not got any off-road ability. Mm -hmm. But what makes this really unique is that it doesn't use a Multistrada engine. So every V4 Multistrada runs the spring-operated valve V4S. Okay. The V4 engine, which is for the Multistrada that gives you the massive serving in intervals. Yeah, it's like 60,000 kilometers. kilometers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they've got massive. rid of Desmo valves. I think I'd be in a grave by the time I put that many miles on a bike. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be pretty good. But the, <coughs> the RS runs the Desmo engine. Mm -hmm. So that runs this very, very similar engine to the Street Fighter and the Panigale. Wow. So we've got more revs, more fun. And with the pipe that we had fitted, the Acropovic, it's 192 horsepower. Is it? So it's 192 horsepower. Wow. In a Multistrada chassis similar to the Pikes Peak with 17 inch wheels. So it's lighter than the Pikes Peak because it's got a titanium subframe, first time, a lighter battery, and we've got more power, lighter exhaust. It is the kind of most extreme multistrada you could possibly imagine. Yeah, um, I mean, because actually when I rode the Multistrada V4S, I didn't like, I wasn't wanting for that to be more no. sporty. Like, it's, that's, a, that's the that sportiest is the adventure. That's the of the adventure bike. Yeah, it is, isn't if it? If you do back to back tests with that Multistrada and every other adventure bike, it's the fastest. It's yeah. the sportiest. It's the got quickest. A, like a nice connected front end. Like, yeah. you don't think, oh God, I, I wish this was on 17. I wish this was faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, but literally, that's what we like, I like about the Ducati that somebody at Ducati was having his espresso and got. Hey, has anybody thought about putting a Panigale engine in a Multistrada? <laughs> and, and, you know, Enzo's gone, that'll be fun. Let's do it. And, and that is essentially, so the Street Fighter V4S is 208 horsepower or 209 yep. off the top of my head. But it's essentially that engine in a Multistrada chassis. Which the difference between when I rode the, uh, the two bikes, yes, the Multistrada doesn't rev anywhere near like yeah. what the like the street fight is really revvy. I yeah, mean yeah, I think yeah. it's we're up at sort of fourteen, fifteen thousand yeah, revs. So it just revs to the moon. You know? so, so have you got some of that element in this? Yeah, RS? yeah. So the standard one is done with about ten and a half. But still when the standard one is done at ten and a half, it has just smoked a GS and a KTM. Yeah. So let's you know put that into perspective. This will rev onto twelve five and redline at about thirteen. Okay. So on track this just goes like whoop, whoop. you know is it's it? like it's like a race bike. Class. It is a race bike on stilts, uh -huh. but it makes it feel even stranger because if you ride a uh, Panigale or a Street Fighter on track, you already go in your race levers and you expect going, this is going to be fast. Where this, you kind of get on it and you go, Multistrada, mm. Multistrada mm. dash, blind spot detection, adaptive cruise control, cornering ABS, all the, com you can get panniers on it. So it's got everything yeah. 
that a Multistrada has to be comfortable, but then is as fast, arguably, as a ZX10 or a G6000. So you rode this at quite a special track. Yeah, so this was in uh, Modena. So it's the track that Ferrari used quite a lot. We had the track to ourselves, just me, one photographer, one video guy, and two members of Ducati staff. Wow. So they didn't tell me what I was gonna ride. They just said, Chad, if you happen to be in Modena, bring a dead cow and we've got something we'd like to show you. Uh -huh. so, All right, but when they, when they pulled the cover off, were you like, uh, well, or were, was, were you, were, were well, you, before, were you wanting like, the next street fire, the next Panagali. Well, all I knew was I needed race levers and it was going to be on a race track. Yeah, exactly. So you yeah. go, oh, it's going to be Panagali or Street Fighter. And then when you see the silhouette under the cloth, you were like, that's big. And then you saw little leads coming out. So I was like, it's got tie warmers and it's on slicks. So I was like, well, it's big. You know, is it super moto? Is it, is it what they're going to do? And then they pulled the cloth off and you got minutes like a Pikes Peak, which I've already ridden before, which is a great bike. And then you look at it and you go, oh, that's not a you know, multi and they're like, no, that's a, that's a Panigale, you know, that's the Desmo engine in there. So wow. you've got more power and it's lighter and you've got the full Acropovic race exhaust and you've got different engine modes because on the multi you've got an Enduro mode. Mm -hmm. We don't need an Enduro mode no. on a bike that's worth this much money. So that's a race mode. The spring operated valve engine, you can't change engine uh, braking assist but this has got a Panigale. So you get the Panigale electronics and Street Fighter electronics. So you can change engine brake strategies. You can have restricted torque in the first few gears or you can have full power in first gear. You've got your lap timer. You, you've nice. got everything of the tech or almost everything of the tech of the Street Fighter and the Panigale. And then all the cruise control, <laughs> panniers and everything else of the Multistrada. So it's these two worlds kind of combining. And as you quite rightly said, there is no reason for it. Right. Nobody went, hmm, I was really disappointed by the power of the standard bullet driver. Yeah. But it's just the fact they just went, let's do it. Let's make something unique. And uh, and I put a pic few pictures on social media and you did as well, didn't we, on our channels? Mm -hmm. And everybody went, that looks amazing. Because mm. it looks beautiful as well. Uh, so clearly, Chad, this is like a really, really special bike. Yeah. I mean, it's priced Slightly eye-watering. Yeah, go on. I think it's 33. Yeah, so it's up there. Plus the it? exhaust. Plus, oh, <laughs> yeah, and how much is that? There, God, I mean, you know, the I think Ducati that's exhaust. Two or three price. grand. Was it? Is that yeah, all? I think I've, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's got to be north of that. <laughs> Might be. Last time I looked at a Ducati system. Oh, plus the panniers, like, if you want panniers. Yeah. Anyhow, what was your impressions? Um, really, like, so we tried it in two different modes. On the, we had the standard mode on track, and on track you start to get towards the kind of limitations of that when your toe sliders start touching and, you know, the transition of the suspension. But in the race mode, proper. Was it? Good, like, you can hang on. Like, to click, like, I've ridden adventure bikes on track and you're obviously limited. But this, you could go in the fast group on a track day and not hang on, but you could overtake and pass sports bikes. Because 192 horsepower. Oh no, it's mental power. You know, and it's a V4 Ducati 192 <clears throat> horsepower, plus cornering ABS that's track specific. Anti-wheelie, traction control, quick shifter that's like, bah, bah, you know, mm, nice. revs so fast, it's shorter geared than the Multistrada. It's all being designed to go around a track fast. And I don't think, if you had the Multistrada RS and a Street Fighter, I don't think there'd be a massive amount in it. Do you not? Not massive because, depending on the rider, because here's the thing with the RS, because you're sat upright and you're quite, when you brake, you can brake so late because you've got the cornering ABS and you've got these big wide bars and a big tank to kind of, and you can almost throw it around, you know, like a big supermoto. Mm. Um, and I think some people would be intimidated a bit by the Street Fighter and Panigale. I think when you get to an elite rider or a really fast track day rider, then the difference is going to be. But on track, I don't think it'd be, you know, if we had a stopwatch, maybe two seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, you're not going to get absolutely smoked by sports bikes. So what changed the uh, performance b between when you went from 
which mode were you saying? Uh, standard mode and then track. Yeah, you've what? got a track mode. So you've got semi-active all in suspension. So that was the thing so that you, changed it completely it for you. changes how the suspension reacts. Right. Then your rider aids are trimmed. Mm -hmm. And also the amount of torque that you uh, request and is delivered is different in the modes. Okay. So if you go for full request of torque, even in race mode, it won't give you full torque because you, you can't use it. Okay. You have to select a specific engine mode that says full, that gives you full. Mm -hmm. So you can really trim the bike to how you okay. want it to perform. But it's lighter than the Pikes Peak. It's heavier than a Street Fighter. I would say probably 20 to 25 kilograms heavier than a Street Fighter. So once you start, you know, the, the transition, because it's a long way, when you're lent over on a bike with quite long suspension, it's like, wow, you're big lean. The big lean, you know, yeah, yeah. you're gonna feel it. Yeah. But you could literally put the panniers on, ride it from Cumbria to Italy, you know, go for two, three days touring, get to Mugello, change the tires, go around Mugello, you know, and be hanging on the back of sports bikes, finish your day, change the tires, put your panniers back on and ride. Class. Yeah. There's nothing real at the <clears throat> moment, there's nothing, I don't. Let me choose my words correctly. I don't think there's a faster bike around a racetrack that you can fit panniers to. Yeah. Interesting. There's a Kawasaki's supercharged uh, SX. SX. Yes. But that is heavy. Yeah. And BMW are going to be launching their new M1000 M XR. Yeah. But that has not been released as we stand sit today. So at the moment, the fastest bike around a racetrack with panniers, the Ducati RS. So you've got la la last question on that one before we move to the Grand Tour. Obviously, the Pikes Peak bike that was a really special bike yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So and you've ridden that one too. Yeah. So so how would you compare them? So the Pikes Peak is literally. Is it, is it like noticeably better, or yeah. is it just more special in the way it looks? No. So you got the Pikes Peak is a Multistrada with 17-inch wheels, uh, running a Multistrada engine. This ah, yeah. is a Multistrada with 17-inch wheels running a. Street Fighter Panigale engine. Okay, so it's got more, it's just got more so of everything. more rev, more yeah. power, more excitement, more scream. And more um, electronic options like you were More electronic about options. Before with the engine and brake. A and a little bit lighter with the titanium subframe. Yeah. It's not massive over the Pikes Peak to be, you know, the Pikes Peak I think is like uh, 170 and this goes to 180 and then 192 with a race exhaust. So it's not massive, you know, you didn't get off the Pikes Peak going slow. Yeah. In the same way we said about the Multistrada V4S, no, I don't think anybody's ridden one of those and gone, well, that's a slow adventure bike, because it absolutely smokes everything. Mm. But Ducati literally just went, anybody thought about putting that Panigale engine in that chassis? And then somebody went, let's put a titanium subframe on it. First time we've ever done it, but let's give it a go and let's give it this different engine brake strategy and let's do this and let's do that. And then the look of it as well, I think it looks yeah, stunning. Yeah, no, it looks class. And do you know what? It's awesome to see manufacturers like actually pushing the envelope. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that, that I think is why you're so enthusiastic about Ducati in general and why I would be as well. And you go on their stand at Eichmer and stuff and you're like, ah, oh, thankfully, you know. Yeah. Like, because you go on like Suzuki's and stuff and we were on there the other day and it was just like, oh, I can't believe they're putting GSX, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway, exactly. that, that's a different conversation. But the thing is like, when you go onto Ducati and you see them innovating and doing new things, and it's like, yeah, that actually that's cool, you know. Yeah, when it's I great. when I was a kid, I had a poster of a 900 SS. Then I had a poster of a 916, and I assume the generation after I had a poster of a 999. And they are the poster bikes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And this RS is a bike that, you know, if you went to the NEC bike show, you go to Milan, you come away going, wow. Yeah, that's you, cool. you know, you're probably never going to ride it. You're never going to afford it. It's completely, you know, who's going to buy a 35,000 pound you know, a super bike that looks like a Multistrada, possibly very few. But it's just a fact, you know, when you go to a car show, you want to see a Ferrari. Mm. You know, mm. when you when you go to the bike show, you want to see something revolving on a plinth that goes, that's a bit special. Yeah. And that, A, ticks that box, and B, like we agree, you have to kind of say, well done Ducati for mm. just going, let's spend a lot of money producing a bike that makes no sense. Class. So Tell us about this one, Chad. So it, it carries on the same Multistrada platform. So this is exactly what we've had before with the Multistrada V4S. 
So this is the 170 horsepower engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a spring operated valve engine with a long service intervals. It's the same power, same torque as the V4S, the same semi active suspension, which is Marzocchi, because that's designed for skyhook and comfort. Well, yes. obviously the RS was designed for the track, so that one's all ins. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is the kind of ultimate Multistrada. So it's got every kind of accessory you could possibly imagine on it. Um, it's got its own kind of livery and colors. So you've got the adaptive cruise control, the blind spot detection, the panniers, the luggage, the heat seat, heat grip, everything that you can have. And then it's got a few little bits that they did on the Multistrada Rally. So the bars are slightly different. The seat is a little comfier. They've got little cooling ducts on the side that look like aero wings, but they're not there for cooling. Um, so this is the Multistrada, um, kind of like the ultimate. Okay. So rather than you going into and buying a V4S and going, I'll have that accessory and that and that and that and that and that, and the price goes up, you can just buy this one, which has got everything on it. But a slightly lower price. Yeah, at a lower if, price. Right, okay. And it's got a few little tweaks that we'll see on every Multistrada for 2024. Okay. So it's got even got the um, the electronic lowering seat capacity. Oh, does it, what? Fitted to its standard? Yeah. Yeah, wow. So that is done on a button. Just explain how that works, Chad. So it basically removes preload. Right. So um, you can set it to be auto. And then I think when you get to... 60 kilometers an hour, it comes back, or you can press a button for it to come back. Right. So as as you come to a stop, it takes the preload out the shock. Um, and obviously if you've got no preload on the shock, the shock sags. So depending on how much you weigh, depends on how much it sags. So if you've got a load of luggage in the panniers and you're 15 stone, it'll sag quite a lot. And then you can touch the floor easy. Then when mm. you get going, it puts the preload back because if you didn't have any preload, it would affect stability at high speed. Mm. So you even th got something called an easy lift. Okay. Right. So easy lift, when the bike is on the side stand, takes all the compression and rebound off. So the bike is soft. So when you pull it off the side stand, it drops. Ah, oh, nice. Just little, all mod cons, little yeah. backlit switch gears, you know, the adaptive cruise control. It's just, instead of specking, 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 specking and going crazy with the price, this is like, this is, it's still expensive, um, but it's not gonna be cheap. Um, so it is kind of like the ultimate Multistrada V4 yes. S and it's got its own livery and its own colors and its own kind of, it's, an, its own model. So this, this, this bike ultimately is for the Multistrada V4 S owner who wants the best version of that. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think BMW have done it with kind of TE editions or something, which is yeah, like a okay. GS with everything. Do you know what I mean? Fog lights and everything. And this is similar to what the Caty have done, is that it's got every accessory that they think that you need. Plus, they've taken a few bits from the rally and gone, oh, that works really well on the rally, those little cooling ducts. We'll put those on and the, the vibration bars, they're a little bit different, less vibration, seats a bit different. So they've taken a few aspects of other bikes to give us a grand tour. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, it looks really, really, really nice in the, you know, it's just beautifully designed, you know, the panniers are all colour coordinated, it's got its own livery, it just looks beautifully finished. Class. And um, yeah, I, I loved riding it. It was a great ride, great launch, loads of miles, um, and the adaptive cruise control on it is just comical. Yeah. Um, but yeah, beautifully designed, if you want the ultimate, fully accessorised, tick all the boxes, Multistrada. That's your one. That's the one to go for. And they'll be available? They're available now. Are they? Yeah. Okay. We'll have to do a group test on the RS as well, won't we? Oh, yeah, well. So we'll do Panigale versus Street Fighter versus RS. That would that would be nice. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So Sign a big indemnity form, yeah. A big insurance form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Ducati, when you've watched this, what we need to do is find the difference in performance between a Panigale, a Street Fighter and an RS on a track yeah. in Italy on Pirelli slicks. That's right. Well, my track record at the moment isn't great, mm -hmm. so. We'll just dub that bit Yeah, out. you want to dub that bit out. <laughs> Spot on. Okay, well, look, really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the gear used to protect Chad on test, and we'll see you on the next one.